Hello everyone and welcome to Dig Ventures very first virtual archaeology pub quiz. We know that loads of you around the world have been really missing hanging out with your mates in your local and frankly we feel exactly the same and that's why we've decided to start a weekly pub quiz so that we can all hang out and have a little bit of fun online. So each week the quiz will be hosted by one of our team and all you need to take part is a pen, paper, a couple of drinks, some snacks and some of your mates to join in online too. So this week I'm your host, I'm Maya, I am an archaeologist and head of community at Dig Ventures. My drink of choice is a pint of, or half a pint to be fair, of its ritual and my snack of choice is a lovely bunch of colourful M&Ms. Um, I have six rounds of archaeology questions lined up for you. They are short, they are sweet and they are full of archaeological goodness. Um, they are as follows. Round one, excavation. Round two, archaeological animals. Round three, castles. Round four, stone circles. Round five, where in the world? And finally, round six, there is a mystery artefact for you to try and identify. You will have roughly 10 seconds to try and answer each question. There will be time for refreshments and little breaks and chats as we go along. And I will read out all of the answers at the end. Now beware, some of the questions are very easy. Some of them are a little bit more tricky. Some are designed to test your powers of deduction while others are just plain old meant to test your archaeological trivia knowledge. Either way, I hope you'll find all of the questions to be lots of fun and that you'll enjoy chatting to each other online. So, are you ready to start the quiz? Have you got your pen, your paper, your drinks, your snacks, your mates, and most importantly, your thinking caps on? Let's go. Round one. Question one. What did Heinrich Schliemann notoriously use to excavate the site that he believed to be the ancient city of Troy? So yeah, that's what did Heinrich Schliemann notoriously use to excavate the site that he thought was the ancient city of Troy? Question two. Imagine you find a beautiful ceramic pot while you're digging on site, but you don't really know how old it is. What scientific dating technique could you use to help figure it out? It's a little bit of a tricky question, this one. All right, question three. Archaeologists have a special word for objects that weren't made by humans, but were picked up and carried around just because someone liked them. A bit like we might pick up a piece of sea glass or a pretty rock from the beach. Is the word archaeologists use for this? A. Manuport. B. Trinket. C. Ambifact. Or D. Charm. I'll give you those options again. Is it A. Manuport. B, trinket, C, ambifact, or D, charm. Question four. When archeologists dig through different layers of dirt, they often use a special chart to make a careful note of the color of each layer. What is the name of this chart? Is it hex, chroma, munsel, or dulux? And for a bonus point, what is this colour? Now this is really one for the archaeological nerds. Have a go, see if you can name this colour. Right, I think that's about your 10 seconds and it's time for question five, the last question of round one, so get ready. It's the end of your day on an excavation and some of your fellow archaeologists say that they're going to have a nap. What do they actually mean? Are they A, going to have a little lie down? Are they B, going to the pub to compare theories? 
are they C, going to unwind by trying to make their own flint tool? Or are they D, going to have a bit of fun by trying to piece a broken pot back together like it's a 3D puzzle? So that's it's the end of your dig day and some of your fellow archaeologists say that they're going to have a nap. What do they actually mean? They're going to have a lie down, going to the pub to compare theories, they're going to unwind by trying to make their own flint tool, or are they going to have a bit of fun by trying to piece a broken pot back together like it's a 3D model? And that is the end of round one. And we're going to roll straight into round two. Round two. Archaeological animals. Question one. Which animal is depicted on the gates of Mycenae? That's which animal is depicted on the gates of Mycenae. Great. Question two. Which animal is depicted on this ancient Greek vase? You can see it's part lion, part goat and part snake. But which animal is it? Hope you've got a good look at it because it's now time for question three. To the nearest 500 years, how long ago did humans first domesticate dogs? I'm not going to be too fussy. To the nearest 500 years is absolutely fine. All right, question four. Also a dog question. What is the name of the dog who is credited with leading to the discovery of Lascaux Caves in Bordeaux? What is the name of the dog who is credited with leading to the discovery of Lascaux Caves in Bordeaux? Okay, I have to point out he didn't find them on his own. He was with his owner, the teenager, Marcel. They were going for a walk in the Dordogne and the dog disappeared down a hole and Marcel went in after him. Together they discovered Lascaux Caves. What is the name of the dog? Also another question on Lascaux Caves. It's time for question five. Hope you're ready. So Lascaux Cave, as you probably know, is filled with hundreds of paintings of animals, many dating back at least 15 or 20,000 years. For a single point, just one point, going to be a bit stingy here, for a single point, can you name three of the different types of animals that are painted on the walls of Lascaux Cave? Three, two, one, and that is the end of round two. Unless you want a bonus question, do you want a bonus question? Excellent, that's the spirit. I've got an animal bonus question for you. So in 2018, archeologists found the leg of a pygmy mammoth frozen in the permafrost. It was so well preserved that you could still stroke its golden fur after like more than 20,000 years, which is absolutely amazing. But at 4 a.m. one morning, the archaeologists on site were woken by a loud noise. And when they went to look out of the tent, they saw an animal trying to eat their 20,000 year old discovery. What animal was it? Fantastic. And that is the end of round two animals. We're going to take a very short break now, but we'll be back in a second with round three. Oh, you caught me eating my snacks. Right, we are back in time. 
for round three. Round three is, of course, castles. So all you castle geeks out there, get your pens ready. Let me finish chewing my sweet. Excellent. We're ready for question one. Which museum has the ruins of a medieval castle in its basement? That's which museum, which internationally famous museum, has the ruins of a medieval castle in its basement? Great. Question two. Roughly how long did it take to build Carnarvon Castle? Roughly how long do you think it took to build this whacking great big castle? Great. Question three. A little bit of a more tricky one. What is a castle's main defence? What is a castle's main defence? Have a little think about it. Awesome. Question four. Which castle is this? Now, I've not picked the easiest one, I've not picked the most famous one, but it is really, really distinctive. It's one of the only completely round ones in the country. Can you name it? All right, we are coming up to the end of round three. We're on our final question. Question five to do with castles, and it's a which is the odd one out. So out uh, of the following, which is the odd one out and why? Is it Bodium Castle, Leeds Castle, Maiden Castle, or Chateau de Foix? So which one of those four? Bodium Castle, Leeds Castle, Maiden Castle, or Chateau de Foix. Which of those four is the odd one out and why? You've got 10 seconds. Go. Awesome. And that is the end of round three. Do you know what? We are going to roll straight into round four. Round four. We're on to stone circles now, taking a considerable step back in time from our medieval castles, going all the way back to the Neolithic and Bronze Age. So, first question, question one. How many years ago were the first stones erected at Stonehenge? Again, I'm going to take it to about the nearest 500 years, not going to be too fussy here. To the nearest 500 years, how many years ago were the first stones erected at Stonehenge? And what is the name that archaeologists give to a pair of upright stones with a third stone across the top? So that's question two. What is the name that archaeologists give to a pair of upright stones with a third stone across the top? Just like you would see at Stonehenge. What's the word for that? Very good. So another Stonehenge question for you here. Question three. How many stones can you still see at Stonehenge? I'm going to give you some options to choose from. Is it 24, 46, 64 or 83? How many stones can you still see at Stonehenge? 24, 46, 64 or 83? Fantastic. So question four, this is not a Stonehenge question. Can you name 
this stone circle. Have a look in the picture, the landscape probably gives you a couple of clues. Can you name this stone circle? It is not Stonehenge. Fantastic. And now it is finally time for the last question of round three. Um, where is the further south stone circle in Europe? Awesome. And that is the end of round four stone circles. I uh, don't know about you, but I just need a little bit of um, refreshment. Mm. Hope you're all having a little snack. I'm still here with my M&Ms and um, I'm just wondering what colour M&M you think I should eat next. Just while we have a little break. This is just a silly thing to do while you chat amongst yourselves. Which colour M&M shall I eat next? What's the answer? Blue. Is it blue? No. Is it red? Oh no, you say yellow. Oh. Brown was it? No, is it orange? Hmm. I know. Green. Round five, where in the world? So this is a great round for all you travelers out there and for those of you who love your world archeology. span Question one, at 10,000 years old, Gebekli Tepe is often described as the world's oldest known temple and is thought to have been built by a nomadic or semi-nomadic population. It's somewhere that I have always wanted to go and visit, but where in the world is it? Question two. Last year, archaeologists found traces of the world's oldest cheese. Where was it found? And for a bonus point, how old was it? Again, I'm accepting answers within the nearest 500 years. So yeah, where is the oldest cheese in the world being found? And how old was it? I don't even want to think about how stinky that must have been. Do want to think about how old it might have been though. So how old was it? And where was it found? Great, you ready for question three? Right, question three. So these gold artifacts are absolutely beautiful. They're about two and a half thousand years old. Can you name the culture who made them and where they were from? Go on, take a good, take a good close up look at them. Who made them and where were they from? Great, so now, instead of gold artefacts for you, this time we've got some beautiful little terracotta figurines. Look at them, aren't they absolutely stunning? Again, they're about 2,000 to 3,000 years old. Can you name the culture who made them and where they were from? Last question in the where in the world round, and it is a good one. So question five. The Sutton Hoo boat burial is probably one of the most famous Anglo-Saxon discoveries in England, and as well as a massive wooden boat, 
Um, archaeologists also found jewellery, weapons and armour. But intriguingly, among all of that, they found these little black squishy blobs which turned out to be bitumen, which they think was for boat maintenance. Now, they examined where the bitumen came from by looking at chemical signatures and analysing like little fossil remains that were inside. Where in the world do they think this bitumen came from? Remember, this is an Anglo-Saxon boat burial we're talking about. Where in the world did the bitumen for maintaining these boats, where did the Anglo-Saxon population get it from? And that's it, that is the end of round five. Again, time for another short break. I know I need to eat a couple of peanut M&Ms need to have another sip of my rich, It's Ritual. I'll see you back here in a minute. All right, we are back for the very final round and the very final question. Oh, I hope you've had loads of fun so far. I'm gonna make this last question a good one, I promise. All you have to do is tell me what this is. What is it? What do you think it is? Wild speculation, educated guesses, silly suggestions, all welcome. Tell us what you think it is. Time's running out. Five, four, three, two, one. Ding, 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 ding. And that is the end of our very first pub quiz. If you are playing with friends, now is the time to take photos of your answer sheets and to swap them. If you're answering your own questions and marking your own questions, then just sit back and have a sip of your drink and a munch on your snacks. Give everyone else a couple of seconds to take their photos and swap their answer sheets. Right. It's time for the answers. It's answer time. All right, I'm going to whiz through these real quick. I'll stop in some places to give little explanations, but most of all, my answer goes if you want to dispute it, take it up in the comments, all right? So, round one was excavation. Question one, dynamite. Terrible, isn't it? Dynamite. Question two. Sorry, radiocarbon dating is the wrong answer because it can only be used on organic materials. Totally accepting two choices here. You could have said luminescence dating or even the newly developing rehydroxylation dating. Question three. The correct answer was maniport. Question four. The correct answer was Munsell, and the bonus question point was 10YR4 slash 6. Question 5, the correct answer was they're going to unwind by trying to make their own flint tool. Round 2, animals, what are the answers? Question 1, lion. Question 2, chimera. Chimera? Chimera. I don't know how you pronounce it. Question three. To the nearest 500 years, the first dogs were domesticated, or the first direct evidence that we have of domesticated dogs is from about 14 and a half thousand years ago. 14 and a half thousand years ago. Question four. The name of the dog who discovered Lascaux Caves is Robot. Question five. You had to name three animals that were on the walls of Lascaux Cave. You could have any three from the following. Mammoth, horses, deer, ibex, birds, humans, or more specifically half humans, bears, wolves, auroch, bison, rhino, or lion. 
Hope you got some of those at least. For your bonus question, which animal tried to steal a 20,000 year old artifact from an archaeological dig in 2018? The answer was a polar bear. Crazy. The stuff that we have to put up with on site sometimes. Anyway, answer to round three. Castles. Question one. The Louvre. If you've been down there, you'll know it. You'll have seen it. It's massive. Question two. Five years. Question three. Oh, come on, it's not the drawbridge, it's the location. Location, location, location. I hope some of you got that. Seriously, kudos to everyone who got this for a Stormall Castle in Cornwall. Again, it's another one to put on your list of things to visit when the time comes. And finally, for the end of round three, which is the odd one out. The odd one out is, of course, Maiden Castle, because it's actually an Iron Age hill fort. Round four, stone circles. Your answers are question one, four and a half thousand years ago. Yes, yes, we know there's an earlier earthwork enclosure, but we specifically said when were the first stones put up. So four and a half thousand years ago. Well done to everyone who got that right. Question two is of course Trilithon. Question three, it's 83. 83, that's way more than I would have thought, but according Accordingly, it's 83. This stone circle in question four was, of course, Castle Rig. And question five, the furthest south stone circle in Europe, is in Greece. So, answers to round five. Hope you're all keeping scores nicely and are doing really well and are pleased with yourself. Um, where in the world? Answer to question one. Gebekli Tepe is in Turkey. The oldest cheese in the world, which was question two. The oldest surviving cheese found so far was found last year in Croatia and is approximately 7,000 years old. 7,000 years old. I bet that's a good one. Question three. These gold artifacts were made by the Scythians or the Scythians. They're from Siberia. These terracotta figurines in question four were made by the Nok culture in northern Nigeria. And the bitumen from question five is thought to come all the way from Syria. Yes, really, Anglo-Saxons were using Syrian bitumen to mend their boats. Pretty amazing, really, isn't it? Last but not least, round six mystery object. What do you think it is? Go on, have one last guess. What do you think it is? Okay, so to be fair, we don't actually know 100% for sure right yet what this is, but we have two answers that we are willing to accept at the moment. The first is a kind of lamp dangler for dangling lamps or small cauldrony things from um, or for burning things in. Um, it would have had a chain from the top and then three little ones kind of holding something a little bit bigger. Or the alternative is a, oh it's kind of horrible, a device for maiming horses in battle. Now usually these things are a bit more spiky and don't necessarily have holes in the ends of each arms but they are usually this shape. So until we get this artifact sent off to an expert for their expert opinion, we are for now accepting both of those answers. Either a weapon for maiming horses in battle, makes them stumble when they tread on them, or a kind of lamp dangler thing. So well done to everyone who came up with either of those answers. And you know what? Extra special bonus points to people who came up with something different because of your sheer creativity. So that's all of the questions answered. I hope you had a whole load of fun. Let us know what score you got in the comments below. And we look forward to seeing you next week for the next Digventures Virtual Archaeology Pub Quiz. Over and out.